Hello Bulawayo, hello world. We're coming from Bulawayo to talk to you about the arts and culture in Bulawayo. With me today, I have the Reverend Paul Damasane. Hello, Reverend. Yes, good evening. And good evening to you listeners, wherever you are. All right. I also have historian and author, Ubaba U Patisa Ninyati. Sabonabab. Patisa Ninyati, yes, All right. Okay. So, gentlemen, what we're here to discuss today are the arts. As we know, you as a historian and Ubaba, you are both involved in the arts in some way or other. So my first question would be, what is the link, what is the relationship, rather, between the arts and our culture? Ubaba Patisan. Okay, perhaps let me kickstart that one. Uh, there is a very close link between arts and culture. Arts are expressive by their very nature. And they express something. That which they express is the culture. And the culture itself is informed by something bigger. And that, as far as Africa is concerned, is the cosmos. Hence, we talk about cosmology. So our arts, when you look at an arts performance, you are looking at the heavens, the relationship between these cosmic bodies, how they relate one to the other. So that's our culture. Uh, as we shall elaborate, it is a culture of relatedness, of cosmic bodies relating one to the other. And so that is our culture. But then, directly and indirectly, our arts are expressing our culture and indirectly expressing our cosmology. What he really means, basically, is... is is to bring it maybe to your understanding. It's, it's more about how we think. What in our minds is our world? Mm -hmm. Where do we kind of walk within this world? Now, when you can locate yourself within that world related to the cosmos, to the environment, to the way you relate even to the soil itself mm -hmm. and to the animals, both, both wild and domesticated, that relationship, you then would call it culture. So in simpler language, they would call it a way of life. But when you call it a way of life, you have, just, you, you, you have simplified it to a street type of understanding when in itself it is deeper than that. It is something that says, I do this, maybe because I've always seen it being done, but there is a reason why it was done, why it changed, and also there is, a, there is need for an understanding of how did it change. When you see that, you will then see within that thread an understanding of how then that expression of our way of life, of our thought, of our worldview, it is now expressed into something that you can touch, something that you can respond to. When, for example, I dance in my church as I worship the Lord, I don't, it could be an, a song in English, but that song in English is being sung by Ndebele, who is an African, you will find that I am going to do certain movements that an ordinary white man would not do. I would move in some form of revolutions as if to say I am rotating around something. That, of essence, is the cosmos where the sun is almost there, bigger than anything else in the universe. And all these other stars are rotating around the sun, making their revolutions and counting themselves. So we can get in there. By the time I get into the spirit, it's like God and me have become one. Yeah, that, that, that's important. Uh, what he, it's the totality. You don't isolate an aspect of nature, an aspect of the environment. 
but it's all scintillating as one and all in equilibrium, dynamic movement. There is nothing that is still. There is movement. The stars, the moon, the planets, all of them relate one to the other and they are in constant motion. And it's not wild movement. It is movement that is predictable, movement that is rhythmic. It's a movement which is characterized by seasonality. And this is what maintains life. It's very important to appreciate that. The moment there is no movement in this world, in this cosmos, that's the end. Uh, why has our culture changed? Imagine the sun has set. And the sun did not rise the following day. Temperatures will continue to go down. Things will freeze. And then there is no life. It is this change. Life, death, but it's represented by there is a day, there is a night. If you leave it as day and it's continuous day, that, I can assure you, is the end of the world. And it's night, night for all the time. That will again. So it's, 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 you need to be changing day, night. That rhythm is very important. Predictability is very important. Just imagine a situation like this one. The plowing season has just come. Women, men have come, gone out there to till the soil. Then it germinates. You have the requisite uh, weather conditions that support growth. And then suddenly it becomes winter. There is frost. It's disaster. So this is, this is why now we have a problem. Because there is so much that we are emitting this carbon uh, effluence into this atmosphere. And the result is a disturbance of that balance. And once you disturb this balance, you are disturbing Mother Earth. And I think it was that William Shakespeare who said there is no, hell hath no fury or yes. something hell like that. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorn. Aha! You scorn this woman. To us, this earth is a woman. Don't ever attempt to scorn her. She fights back. I've said this before. And when she fights back, our technology has no chance to reverse anything. It's like a tsunami. So that's what we are going to get as long as we disturb that important balance. When it is lost, uh, I can tell you it's disaster for us. So it's very interesting. You are both raising very interesting points. But now, uh, as is usually said, culture is dynamic. Is that correct? Yes. What, well, whether it, it may not be, it may be correct, but it may not be right. Uh, why, why do I say that? Uh, when I say culture is dynamic, we should understand that dynam the, the dynamism of culture should of necessity be primarily intrinsic. We should allow it to change. Yes. But there are times that there can be an external influence that actually forces it to change because a human being is a social animal yes. that responds to things that are happening around him or her. So if, if the universe changes one way or the other, like what Mabunyati said earlier, mm -hmm. suddenly it's winter. You have got to change. Mm -hmm. So change in itself does not bring tragedy no. unless you, I mean, unless you really want to die. Okay. Interestingly, right now we're in the middle of a pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, and this has changed the way that we do things. Not that it has changed in as much as maybe we have been forced to change the way we do things because of it. If you notice right now, there are stipulated numbers. If you're having a funeral, they have to be 
a stipulated number of people. You cannot hold gatherings. We are not going to church. We are not having cultural gatherings. Mm -hmm. So how do you see us going forward after this COVID-19, culturally and spiritually? When, uh, uh, sorry that I'm, I'm, I'm just jumping in because the <laughs> <It's okay>. <laughs> it's okay. we have take to it say on. something. Take it on. But I'll take you back a little bit. During the time of the plague, Martin Luther, the, reform, the reformist, yes. is quoted as saying, and it was during the plague, yes. right? He says, I will not visit my brother even if I want to share and commune with him, lest by my visit mm -hmm. I enable the plague to spread. Yes. That's what he said. In other words, at that time, that far back during the Reformation, it means that plague instituted a transformative role within the process of Christianity at that time. Yes. Fast forward towards the influenza epidemic. When the Spanish flu was around, people would then pray for each other. Yes. But... How would they pray for each other? Because they couldn't ex expressively show their prayer. When you sneezed, ah, <laughs> they would then say, bless you. Yeah. You be blessed that this sneeze is just but a sneeze and not death. So right now we say, oh, bless you, bless you. We don't understand that it came mm -hmm. from there. So in other words, the human being, being the social being that he is, or that she is as well, will always respond to it. Okay. Come to the present. The current scenario will actually destroy some of us preachers who will find themselves that I always preach, and as I preach, I am... I'm responding to somebody who will be saying Godi pa 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 or whatever if he, he or she is there. Godi, Godi. But now, I'm going to be preaching, live streaming, mm -hmm. and I am no longer having the physical audience in my church. And no longer am I just preaching to my church people only, but also to those people that do not attend my church. I dare say that today when I preach, if I go online, I'm preaching beyond my little parish that I'm used to preaching to. Because anybody now can switch on. So it means I need to change the way I deliver my sermon. My sermon has got to be slightly more beyond. If my church is in Entumbane and I'm live streaming, I have got to, in my thinking, Think of somebody, maybe in Florida, who may just go onto Facebook. There's nothing that can stop him from that. So I cannot be saying, you know, all the gassy talk there alone. <laughs> I now have got to bring in something that is yeah. so inclusive. Yes. But the spirit is not limited by what is happening now. And that's what you and I are. All the three of us on this set are primarily spirits that live in a body that have a soul. And because we have a soul, we can find a way of responding to the shenanigans that this life and this environment throws at us. Okay. Uh, he is saying for preaching, we can do it like that. But what about our culture? As, as people, we are used to things like Gunga Fumuntu, Elainini, we all go to show our support. If one of our children is getting married, we all go to show our support. Even cultural activities, rain dances, how are those going to be affected now by this limit on the number of people, this stipulation of the number of people that can gather at any given time together? Um. I think we need to be clear that when there is a pandemic of this magnitude, I think the first thing that people are assuming and probably doing so erroneously is as if this pandemic is new to the African continent. 
I think I wrote an article which was dealing with a certain pandemic and how Africans responded to it. What is important is you have your cultural tools with which you respond to a pandemic. Right now, I don't think, at least I'm not aware that you've got a name for this pandemic. We, we don't know it. It's difficult to fight something that you don't know. Something that you know has a name. But, hey, what's your name? We don't seem to know the name. So what is going to happen now is Africa will suffer more. Africa will suffer in that Africa has to receive ways of dealing with this animal that affects them, which they have not named. The solutions will come from somewhere. Look at how we are responding. You can see those societies that are individualistic will benefit. For them, this lockdown, they stay with, they are already doing it even when there is no pandemic. But for us, during a death, a funeral, we must be together. Yes. We are together there. Yes. But now, it's something new. And one thing that is certain to come is some people will be disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. He was talking about a live streaming. Yes. But can you imagine how many people in Zimbabwe are going to consume products of live streaming that you'll be doing okay. in rural areas where the majority of the people are to be found. Yes. So we are already... Now, the other thing is how they are responding a, what I've referred to in my private circles, uh, oral pampas. This is what we are wearing now, oral pampas. <laughs> oh, the ones that we... Yeah, just yeah we are using oral <laughs> pampas, uh, nasal, uh, nasal napkins. Okay. Now, I, I want this one is very important to me. <laughs> yes. When you say that is Reverend Tamasan, mm -hmm. are you talking about his legs? Are you talking about his feet? Are, is he best represented by which part of his body? Um, his face. His face. I agree. It is his face. Yes. But you've already closed it. So we don't see. Our identity rests. This is why my ID, metallic ID, yes. is my face. Okay. Now, I was just off camera. We, I was telling you. A harvest. There is a book called Harvest of Thoughts. Imagine it were a harvest of buttocks. <laughs> Are you able to say... Uh, th that set of buttocks <laughs> belongs to Reverend Tamasani, that one to Patisa Nyati, this one to Mbezi. No. There is a reason. The face carries our identity. Yes. That identity does not reside in a single part of our body. It is our brow. Not in isolation, in relation to our eyes, yes. in relation to our lashes, in relation to our mouths, our nose, our ears, our cheeks, everything in totality. That's what identifies me as Patisa Nyat. Okay. Now, you, have, you are closing that. All right. Blocking that. I don't know you. No. Are you beautiful? <laughs> I don't know. Because how can you be beautiful when I don't know your mouth? I can't see your mouth. All right. On that note, Baba, if we are to say... M30, we mm -hmm. cannot have a lot of people. Um, suppose we, I have you, you have a wife, mm -hmm. or you have several wives. Now at your funeral, you're not allowed to have as many people as would come before. Does that make your funeral less authentic? Or if we're going to invite fewer people for Amalobolo negotiations for our daughter, does that make those cultural exercises less authentic because there are less people there? What is How important, do we go forward? What is important uh, is, is, is not so much to look at the authenticity no. based on the number of people. Mm. To me, it is the authenticity based on what is being done and what does it need. We have grown 
to say, for example, within a funeral, there's something called body viewing. Yes. Right? I would, I would, I would really ask myself, within an African context, where does that come from? Do, did we ever have such a thing? No. And the answer is no. No. It's not no, an African no, issue. No. It was right? not there. Now, yes, because the idea is when often wung born as in feel um ban. Mtarati moon often was on kid seller saying is it doom. So all these things in our culture are not part of it, right? Gathering together, singing and doing all these things. Is it really part of us? The answer is no. In other words, society has changed to where we are now. Mm. Society is still going to change to the future. Okay. So it's, it's clearly now, how are we going to change it? We need now to say, yes, COVID is stopping us from coming together. How best can we do this? It has been cultural, it has been our tradition that we have actually allowed to happen now, yes. we now have got to create a new norm. New Be because human nature by its, by its very, very creation is meant to adapt. Okay. When God created man, he put man into a world or a place that was initially chaotic. And created something and said, out of it, he didn't give him a, a ready-made and prepared earth. He says, work in it and be productive. Yes. In the same manner right now, we need to look at this world and say to us, this is what has happened. This is what COVID has brought us to. We need to create a new norm. There are certain things we need to tell ourselves what are the fundamentals? Because the fundamentals will not change. The principles, the principles will not change because they are universal in themselves. So when we bury, are we going to bury our people? Maybe right now we have the pleasure of burying them. Mm -hmm. But what happens if 500 people die at the same time? One grave. We're going to put them That's in one great. grave, mm. yes. right? And then we will then have to create a new memorialization uh -huh. of that. Yeah. Why? Because man is adaptive. We will adapt to that, but we will bear. If it means we have to burn and cremate, so be it. We may get to that point, but why? It is because we need to decide what do we want to do. Mm -hmm. Do we want to get together for one person who has died so that five others can die? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. We quickly go back to what Babunyati said. It's because we do not know this enemy. We do not understand this enemy. The enemy is elusive. There we have it, the invisible enemy. COVID-19 is what we are calling it, even though Baba Etienne, it's the enemy that we do not know. Please remember to always wash your hands, maintain good social distance, use sanitizer when possible, and please do stay at home. But let us not forget that we are at a festival. Wulawayo Arts Festival continues, and the next group on our stage is coming all the way from Gwanda. Yes. Gwanda South, this is where they come from, uh, the land of the Wabirwa, who are part of a Sutu group. And you can see uh, when they perform the manner of dance, uh, I look at their attire, There's something that has come from uh, the same people. Uh, you can see that, that type of dance that you find in Botswana. That's Bulamba for you. <laughs> <laughs> 